Hi. Okay, so let me get out of Vectorworks land because we're actually not there right now. Um, let's jump into Photoshop. And I'm going to plug in, let's see what I can do. I'm going to plug in, it's not even a great template or tablet, kind of a meh tablet. It's just this Huon. Huon? Is that how you say it? Huon? I don't know. Um, it's a kind of okay tablet. Um, the secret with a tablet is it gives you pressure sensitivity. Um, and that is a super big win when it comes to using paint effects in Photoshop. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did I? I just unplugged my mouse like a dum-dum. Good job, Lily. Way to go. Way to be. All right, so Vectorworks, you need to go away. I really just don't want to look at you anymore. Can I just make your little face disappear? If I have to quit, I'll quit. I'm not, I'm not scared. Quitting Vectorworks now. Goodbye. Yeah, we're going to save that. Um, sure. Don't save it. I, I just don't. It's just too much. Yeah, I quit it. It's over. Game over. All right, so I'm going to bring Photoshop to this monitor. You know, the one in front of my face where I'm looking right now. There it is. Great. Let's open these two plates that I created, okay? So I've got this wall texture and this platform top, these two PSD files. We're just gonna pull them in. Great, so let's start with our platform. Um, and this is something that you guys are going to pick up super quick, I'm sure. So all this is right now is a line drawing on a blank background. So the way that I would approach this, if I'm you, um, is I would actually uh, create a mask. So let me show you how I would do that. Um, I'd create a mask for this top of this platform, okay? Um, I'm also going to just crop this down a little bit so that it's not as large compared to the actual thing, okay? So when we come in to, to make a texture out of this, we want it not to have to be a gigantic file. Like this is a pretty large file just because it's pretty high resolution. Um, so I don't want to make it too crazy big um, on Vectorworks because that just, it's just harder. It doesn't have to be so hard. Um, so we're gonna just gonna just trim this in a little bit closer to its bounds. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, use the magic wand tool to select inside. So I just clicked right inside of it. I selected inside of this layer. Um, and now I have the ability to create a new layer and put a mask on it that is that shape. Okay, so I'm not even actually touching this first layer. I'm just masking on layer two. Um, and that gives me um, like basically my canvas to paint on. Okay, so there's some parchment texture, just as a reference point. Great. I'm going to pick one of these colors and make it my actual base coat on this shape in layer two. Um, and this is a great Photoshop habit to get into. If you hold down option, it's gonna pick up whatever color you click on, right? So if you have a brush tool selected, let's just pick it up, random brush tool. If I, it turns on my, holding down option, turns on my paint dropper. So then if I go in here, I can just kind of do, do, do. Oops, I did the whole thing. Um, let's do it on layer two, right? So that's a much cleaner base tone. And I might actually get rid of, let me get rid of this on layer three. Maybe I'll even, yeah, I'm just gonna make it white for now. I'm not actually gonna export layer three when we get, when it comes to that. Okay, so now I've got that actual base tone that I pulled out of here. Um, I wanna use my brush tool to, it, to give me some of this kind of a watercolor-y texture. So if you haven't worked with the custom brushes, 
you're probably used to like basically these general media brushes, okay, that are just hard edged, fuzzy circles, fuzzy to hard circles, okay? I would love to enlighten you to the wet media brushes here in um, the Kyle brush set. Uh, they are absolutely awesome. So I also like to play with like all of these spatter and concept brushes. And if you need more brushes, you can go in here and you can go to this get more brushes tool and it will like take you to the website and it'll show you how to get all of these super cool brushes. Um, we're going to grab for right now, I'm going to grab like a watercolor brush. So I'm grabbing big softy. Um, and I'm going to use my tablet and my stylus to work with big softy, a fun brush. Okay. Um, I've got white on my, on my brush right now. Let's see what that looks like. I'm not sure it's going to be the answer. Do there it is. Okay. So now, so now if I paint on that surface, I'm not on the actual thing yet to make sure I have the right layer selected. Um, right. I'm getting this kind of a watercolored effect, right? Isn't that lovely? Um, so I'm going to just kind of smudge that in a little. Um, I also want to pick up one of these other tones. So something like this, maybe like a little, um, I want to just switch back to my brush though. Where's my brush tool? Thank you. It thinks I'm still trying to pick a color. It's not quite coming. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I think it's running a little slow because of the things going on in its life right now. Um, so basically now you can see I'm layering an additional color on top of that. Um, there are some other really cool things though that this can do. Okay. So if I'm like, I'm getting almost the same effect just using my mouse right now, I'm just going to do this for a second. Um, to sort of give you an idea of how I would get to that texture. Um, another brush I love is the spatter. Like I love me a spatter because I would use it in my actual, like this one here, this all purpose blending brush is great. Cause it, I mean, it takes a lot of processor, but it basically splatter blends. It's kind of like doing a wet blend, um, but it's working in Photoshop. Okay, so it's kind of blending those textures together. Um, and then I'm going to just pick up, let me just pick up a little something, something, like a little bit of a darker color. And I might just do that like this. Okay. And then I'm going to get an actual spatter brush. So like this Supreme spatter, right? And you'll notice, and this is where your, your, Tablet is going to help you out because you can kind of control the density a little bit better because if you press lighter, you're going to get less of the madness. If you press harder, you're going to get a ton. Um, but it's basically layering paint on in a spatter pattern. Okay. Um, so like if I, let's, let's say this is the texture that I'm, that I'm good on. Okay. Let's just let this be the thing. Then when I'm ready to go um, take it back into Vectorworks, I'm going to turn off everything except for that one layer. I'm going to export it as a PNG file, just like that. Great. Um, platform top, PNG, save. Okay. I want you to do something cooler than this, but like, let's say this is what I did. Um, then I can go back into Vectorworks, which is about to lose its damn mind. I'm going to save this. File. All right, so now here's the magic. I'm going to come back over here because I created that symbol. When I go and adjust this piece, I will be adjusting. Um, it'll also go on to the other, like the one in the, in the set. Um, so we're going to just enter into the symbol and then I'm going to mess with the render texture on this object. Okay. What is even happening? Great. So I go to the render texture. Right now it has no render texture and that's fine because we're going to add a texture and it's chosen this weird mahogany and that's not what I really want. So I'm going to come into my re resource manager, right click new resource, and I'm going to add 
a RenderWorks texture. This RenderWorks texture is going to be called Platform Top. Um, the color is going to come from an image and then we're going to import an image file and that image file is going to be this beautiful platform top PNG we created. Okay, great. Uh, that's fine. I don't love, I don't love that it did not do the mask. So I would actually want to, that's very strange. Okay, well, in any case, um, this platform is 16 feet across. And so I'm actually going to use this tool, which is like the, the scale by distance tool. Um, and this feature size, I can then align to the actual size of the thing. Okay, so I can make it 16 feet across there. Um, and then let's see how that looks and see if it works when we actually apply it to this object. So now I can go in and change the texture to my beautiful custom texture, wherever it is, platform top. Let's just see if it, if it renders. Oh, well, that's dumb. What's happening there? Uh, okay, so that's not, it's bad, but it's weird, mostly, right? You know, like, it's like weird, it's over there. Okay, so it's getting better. I think that this is just some weird lag. I guess what I'm going to do is kind of is look at it in this off kilter version of life um, and make my adjustments accordingly, which is crazy, but I think it's what's about to happen. Um, so I can offset this by like two feet, right? And now that corrects that left to right position. And then I can offset this by, I don't know what, if it's plus or minus two feet. Oh yeah, no, it definitely is minus two feet. Um, and that corrects it in that direction, okay? So now it's actually pretty well aligned. Let's make it, not quite that. So that's pretty good, okay? So I made it one foot 10, I don't know that, but it's okay. Um, you can tweak your rotation, you can tweak your scale if you need to, um, just to make sure that it all aligns into that map correctly. Um, so that's all there is to creating a custom render texture. And I'd love to see what you guys come up with when you pull your Vectorworks files into Photoshop, paint them, bring them back into Vectorworks. Um, I will try and figure out what some of these weird kinks are. Um, but I think my computer is about to kill me. So I'm going to just stop here for now and um, upload this for you for tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye.